Do you like making homemade Christmas gifts? I do too. And I really love making homemade Christmas gifts from the things that I've grown myself. I decided to make these really sweet little lavender sachets for the Dehydrating for Christmas collaboration. Darcy from The Purposeful Pantry was uh, originally hosting this collaboration. If you haven't already, check out her channel. She teaches everything you could ever want to know about dehydrating. But it turns out that Linda from Tuli Lu Creates is filling in for Darcy, so I've linked her channel as well. Check it out, because it looks like she's doing a lot of fun stuff over there. And if you want to see what other channels are doing for this collaboration, check out the hashtag Dehydrating for Christmas. That link is also in the description. So, what are these sachets used for? Well, first of all, they smell amazing. You can put them in your closets or your drawers to make your clothes smell good or your blankets smell good and help keep insects away. They're a natural alternative to mothballs because they repel moths. You could tuck them inside of your pillow at night to get a better night's sleep. You can toss them in the dryer or a sports bag, or you can leave them in the car as an alternative to commercial air fresheners. So hang out with me today as I harvest dehydrate and craft this cute little gift for loved ones in my life. And if you're new here, I'm Sheila and this is my channel, RNS Homegrown. This here is English lavender that I started from seed in 2021. It produced flowers a couple times this year during the growing season. This grows as a perennial for us here in the high desert of Southern California. I'm harvesting the last of these in October. They still have color and scent and the flowers, uh, the little buds aren't quite all the way opened yet. Dehydrating lavender is pretty easy. It can be hung in a dry location or it can be dried in a dehydrator. I'm using my Nesco dehydrator and placing them so that there is plenty of air flow around the flowers. I set it at 95 degrees, which is the lowest setting and is the setting most commonly used for herbs and spices to maintain the most fragrance and color. I'll be checking on this every couple hours. It's done when the stems are brittle and the flower buds easily come off. There are too many factors involved for me to say how long this will take. Like Darcy says on her channel, it takes as long as it takes. I also have a Kasori de dehydrator that you can see right next to the Nesco. But right now it has sh shredded squash in it. Both of them work well for me. The Kasori is really handy because I can fit more into it than I can the Nesco. If I needed to store these for a long time before using them, I would just put them in an airtight glass jar and store in a cool, dark place. Now to remove the buds. I'm gently rolling them between my fingers and they fall off easily. I'm not concerned if a few little stems find their way into my bowl. They're pretty fragrant also, and they aren't too pokey if they're just little small pieces. I'm filling these little burlap drawstring bags I found on Amazon. I paid a little over $8 for a pack of 20. The link is in the description if you are interested. 
If I was super crafty and I knew how, I would probably embroider a little lavender flower on them. I'm tying a little simple knot to keep them closed so the flowers don't fall out. Now I chose these drawstring bags because I thought they would be great to be able to refill them after the scent wears off. And this is my first time making these so I don't know how long the scent is going to last. My hope is that it will last at least until I have more flowers blooming. I like to save and repurpose pretty candle jars. I think this will work beautifully to put three of the sachets in and the jar can be part of the gift as well. And it doesn't cost anything additional. It's easy to get the rest of the wax out by heating it in the crock pot. Then I just wipe out with a dry paper towel and then I wash it with soap and dry it. Now I'm making a simple bow out of the wired ribbon to hot glue onto the top of the jar lid. I'm making loops as I keep the ribbon pinched in the middle. After each loop, I twist the ribbon so the pretty side shows on the outside of the loop. I just eyeball it to make sure how many loops I think will make a pretty bow. I'm using a pipe cleaner to wrap the center where I've been keeping it pinched together, but any flexible wire you have on hand will work. Now to make the bow look full and pretty, just spread out the individual loops. A little hot glue is all that's needed to adhere the bow to the lid. I'm hoping it will be fairly easy to peel off the hot glue from the shiny lid if they want to. Then, I like to cut the tails of the ribbon into a V-cut. And there you go, a cute gift at very little cost and made from the heart. 
I pray that you all feel the grace and peace of the Lord this Christmas season. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll talk to you soon.